Hey, my name is Jeff. Welcome to my channel. I want to qu quickly share some insights that I had about myself, about my self-therapy, overcoming survival, living day to day, and why it has been so difficult asking for help, getting help, explaining myself to people, and why it feels like I, it's been isolating me more and more. Before I start, I want to just thank everybody that has been helping me, giving donations and support and help since the last videos. It's really, really amazing. And I'm working on videos for that um, to, uh, to thank you and to show you the results. Uh, but this has been coming up and I really want to get it out of my system. I first want to share the poem where it all started with. It's a very beautiful poem and I'm going to do my best to read it for you. It's called Atlas by U.A. Fanthorpe. <clears throat> I think he's a British poet, a female poet. Um, for some reason, Fanthorpe sounds like a female last name. That makes no sense. Um, I'm not going to start again. Damn it. I keep making really bad jokes and comments and then I have to do the take again. But I'm not going to start again. This is it. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Atlas by U.A. Fanthorpe. There's a kind of love called maintenance, which stores the WD-40 and knows when to use it, which checks the insurance and doesn't forget the milkman, which remembers to plant bulbs, which answers letters, which knows the way the money goes, which deals with dentists and road fund tax and meeting trains and postcards to the lonely, which upholds the permanently rickety elaborate structures of living, which is Atlas. And maintenance is the sensible side of love, which knows what time and weather are doing to my brickwork, insulates my faulty wiring, laughs at my dry rotten jokes, remembers my need for gloss and grouting, which keeps my suspect edifice upright in air as Atlas did the sky. I'm not gonna analyze the poem. I think it explains itself really well. But I don't think many people understand how important this is or how difficult this can be. And because I think this is such a big part of our everyday happiness, this maintenance, that this love um, is something that a lot of us are looking for all of our lives. and. It's a weird kind of thing that if you don't get it, you get a distrust towards it. So it's like you reject this love or something. That's something that I've been experiencing, kind of. I'm, I woke up today. Oh, no, I didn't woke up, wake up with it. I, uh, along the day, I um, got the idea to add to this list that I've been making, my manifestation list. And I made a list about what I need in my house. What are small things like for uh, maintenance or um, upkeep or things that I need. Like today I was realizing I really need a good vacuum cleaner. I don't have a real vacuum cleaner. I have these carpets upstairs. I really need a good vacuum cleaner. Okay. So I go upstairs. I write it on my list. And just like write a really good vacuum cleaner. But then something deep happened. And it's so funny how when you write, these things just come up. And that's why every time it surprises me again how healing and helpful it is to write these things down and to keep analyzing it. Every little thought um, that comes and, and the emotional response. I'm burping. Yes, I know. It's important. Jesus. Um, so I, this is how it went. I write down this vacuum cleaner and then my brain goes to, I kind of struggle because then it goes to, I kind of trust that it's coming, that, I'm, that in the future I'm going to get a good vacuum cleaner. It's not that big of a deal, right? However, if you are struggling to pay rent, living month to month, week to week, a vacuum cleaner is a big expense that, that you just can't make, okay? so. I believe in my manifestations, it's going to come to me. However, there's this other side of me that is very annoyed that says, no, I want it now. The carpet is dirty now. I want to get this cleaned, right? We need to do this upkeep now. We can't wait for three months until we get a vacuum cleaner. 
then that brain kind of no no that, that brain that part of uh, that that thought trickles down to it goes really fast it's like i want to fix it now so i go to how can i fix it now and then because i can't fix it i can't pay for it right so i think about people who are close by that i can borrow a vacuum cleaner from We're like oh can i borrow your vacuum cleaner then i can fix this that's a good solution right however that's where something exploded <laughs> I got, I get so angry, no, so tired, so, so tired of the thought of, uh, the thought that comes after that is like, okay, I'll borrow the vacuum cleaner, I'll fix it, then I'm, at least I'm settled for now. We can go on again and we'll figure out the next time we have to vacuum, right? That thought just like paralyzes me. It's like I feel... I, it's like if, my, if I grow so heavy, I just want to fall on the floor and not move anymore. And, and it came down to this thought in my head that I heard my parents say a lot. And it's something in Dutch, so I can't really say it in English, but it's, it, it's close to like there. At least you can, you're settled for a little bit. Like you, you, we, uh, you're patched up for a couple of days, so you can keep going. That kind of, that's the maintenance that I, that I'm, that I'm, that I got and that I'm giving to myself and that I just can't take anymore. I just can't take it anymore. It's too exhausting. It's not maintenance. It is living problem to problem and never knowing how to fix it. Always having to think, oh, please, let's, let's hope and pray. And then it gets fixed. And then it's like, okay, at least I can go on. Again. At least it's fixed for now. And then we'll see in the future. This thought that I had, this, this idea of there, at least it's fixed for now, just echoed like so far, so deep, so far back to my childhood. And, it, and then it's like the emotional explosion of anger, of pain, tiredlessness, hopelessness, just <sighs> because really that's the point, right? If vacuuming my carpet is every time this oh am i going to fix this i need to ask for help it's a to do it just adds to the whole fact that cleaning already is a to do and then it becomes such a it's like a reminder every time of how incapable you are of how uneasy things are or how much you need to pray and hope or something every little thing is like that like Eating, buying food, cleaning your house, getting the nice supplies, uh, buying clothes, uh, getting your bills paid, getting your rent paid, everything is works on this principle, like oh, how I'm going to fix this. Oh, there, I fixed it. Like, like, okay, at least I can go for a little while. Let's hope. And we'll see how we fix it along the way, right? That's living in the moment and not really have being able to plan ahead right and but just a lot of emotions and most of all below that is this fear this deep fear that i have and it's not the fear of of the struggle it's because i've been struck i mean i I'm, I'm used to this so this is normal kind of and it's been what i've been thought taught and what i've been given when i was young but there's this fear that i will give up that I will be, that I can't do it anymore, that I'll just stop taking care of it or fixing the problems or uh, I stop doing the struggle so I stop survival. It's, that's the fear. It's kind of like I feel my energy depleted so much. I feel it's my motivation is so gone, but there's this fear of I can't stop because that's the end or something. And, and, and below that is just this, this fear of like, I want to fix it. I want to do it right. I want to do the maintenance right. I really want to do, um, do these everyday things well, but I don't know how. I just don't know how. And that's like at the bottom of it, I really don't know how because I never got it. And that's a part of the abuse that I, that haunts me and, and that echoes with me is just, 
being young and, and always getting this kind of help of, of the bare minimum breadcrumbs um, yeah and then then when getting that help getting a lot of like forced having to be so grateful about with that and getting these fears with that but like okay i'm that's how my my dad used to was like okay i, I helped you now with this but like uh, how are you gonna help yourself in the future huh how are you gonna do that you're gonna need me again well hmm. that's uh sort of this kind of speech and then a lot of shaming and a lot of Um, like judgment, like like I was guilty of of abusing. Um, I was always guilty of abusing the fact that he had to help me. That that was that was obligation. So he had to be correct. So he was going to help me, but only the bare minimum, only w what is required, and then also then leave me alone now because like um, this has already been annoying enough right so there's a lot of these <sighs> frustrations uh, um, under that and then this this gave me so much clarity why first of all why i'm so tired of this why it's so exhausting why i can't keep it up i can do it right for a little while and then i <sighs> I just become so tired because I do it right, like I'm eating right, I'm doing my laundry, I'm cleaning my floors, I'm working out a little bit, I'm sleeping, and then suddenly I come into this wall of, uh, okay, I, I don't have the, the money to do some of these things, or it's kind of falling apart, or I'm just so worried and stressed about how to, uh, how I'm, I'm going to get through the next month that... All these things and things become such a it's like uphill it's like i have a boulder on my shoulder like atlas right so these small things become so hard and then i become so exhausted and i fight myself and then and i'm so and this is where it, the problem is I, because i do this to myself i help myself or i do things for myself and then there's this feeling of like there are you happy now like we ate healthy we did it <sighs> leave me alone now um, because there's no reward, there's no investment. There's no investment. And that's also why asking for help is so difficult or why explaining myself is so difficult and useless because that's where you are, right? You're exhausted, you're so low on energy and asking for help just means explaining yourself, trying to get people to understand where you are. You don't even understand why it's so difficult anymore. You're, sh you're blaming yourself. So you're trying to ask for help while you're also trying to say like, I know I'm, I'm, do I know I'm not doing it perfectly and I know I'm doing it, it, it bad, but like, oh, I'm struggling. So you go into this victim mentality. You almost have to, because that's what they made of you. They already, you started with this guilt and this blame. So you already are guilty. Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm, clearly not deserving of this kind of love and this, this kind of help or these things. So when you go asking for it in the world, you have to kind of manipulate and, and start saying, please, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying. So it's, it's you, you, you learn to manipulate this way, to be this victim and also to yourself. This, but that's the thing, right? I can kind of spare this for most people but in my in my own head i have to i have to almost play this victim to get myself to help myself um and then that comes with resentment towards myself and that's why when i ask for help or when i'm trying to explain this to people it's already costing me energy and then people i don't i don't really get it right so i'm trying to share my thoughts my emotions and then what people do is they try to help but they do patch up work like like the, the rest they they say like okay oh, come now now it'll be fine it'll be fine oh you need help with this one or two thing i can help you it's fine but but they don't see that they're just giving you a little patch up work it's like you're on your knees and they're giving you a pillow for your knees and then you get stuck like i was stuck when i was young between being grateful and being glad and needing it needing it so much and on the other side is like, even with this little bit of help, I still feel shit. I still feel bad. I'm still struggling. S something is not right. And I have no hope and I have no 
positivity or like like um, optimism for the future, right? But you just gave me a little bit, so I, I, I'm forced to be very, very grateful. And then I'm forced to find these roundabout ways to get this part to, be, to help this other part that is really struggling, okay? Oh, but you just gave me a pillow for my knees. Oh, I'm so happy and I want to keep you around because at least you're giving me something. And I've never known more than these breadcrumbs, these little pieces, just to get me a couple of steps further, okay? So I don't, I, it's very difficult to get through that not yourself, right? And then you're explaining that to other people and then they just give you a breadcrumb and you're just exhausted more and you feel more isolated and you feel more alone and and that and the thing that hurts me the most is where I just it's like I've given up on trying to get the help or or expect it because I don't know what it is I don't know Oh, and also the thing I wanted to add is what people give you back is what how toxic positivity can be because when you're trying to exp be down about I'm trying to be down about this and explain like I'm depressed because this is so fucking killing me and draining me that I'm like barely getting myself through the day right and then people block that with saying, oh, you have to be positive, you have to be positive. And they are positive and, they are ha and, and then they help you a little bit and then they smile. And when you, when you get angry then or when you say, look, you're not helping me get out of the way, they're so angry because they had good intentions, right? <sighs> good intentions are breadcrumbs. Same as positivity. If... That, if somebody is really in, pro in trouble and you're bringing them positivity, then um, I'm not going to swear here, but fill it in. And the, the awful thing that makes you is you're so, you're so in need, you're so desperate, you're also playing this victim. It makes you an easy target for every asshole out there who wants to abuse that. You're, you're an easy target. And you know that. That's why so many people are in the same position, I think. Still go deal with bad people. They know it. They feel it. But they need the breadcrumbs. So it's like inside you're like, you do this deal. It's like, okay, um, I'll, I'll play the part. Because at least it's something. And also, that's why, and this is the big understanding that came from this, is why, how I cope with this. Why I give so much worth to instant gratification than the long-term planning. Because there is no long-term planning. And, and this is the, the deep belief under that that I think is rooted in that is I don't deserve that kind of care or effort. I don't deserve or it's just that kind of safety or, or being sure or that kind of security or that confidence of, of the long term is just not possible. It's like maybe I deserve it. I can sort of re reason that. But I don't feel it. It's like it doesn't exist. And I'm so jealous and angry at people who seem so to have that who seem to be like oh yeah i planned this and then i did it and then i'm gonna do that in a couple of years and and it's fine and where it's so easy and so obvious it it i don't i don't feel that and it's and it's and it feels like in my reality it doesn't really exist and those people are and those people are living in a sort of blindness and sooner or later they will fall anyways. And that's a bad belief to have because that's not right. But from my perspective, at least that's just... That, and then I wrote, that's why asking help is almost impossible because it kind of doesn't exist for me. You know, like, I mean, don't listen to those words, but that's just what I wrote. Like, um, that's how it feels like. I want to ask you for help. I want to tell you what I need, how you can help me, but I've, I've run out of ways of 
figuring that out or, or and when I when you put me in that position of asking for help it's like I, I block because it's like you're putting me back into that victim mode you're asking me again to say like go ahead play the victim again do your little dance puppet and then I'll give you some breadcrumbs even when people are really really wanting to help me but I just feel so attacked when people ask me tell me what you need I feel attacked and um, yeah, it's like I, I, I grow dark inside and I block. <sighs> so that's what I was wanting to share. That's been long enough. Hope it helps. The cat is here to say stop. So hi people. Like, share, subscribe, says the cat. I still don't know if I want to say it. See you. Bye.